Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Here I am talking about art and jujitsu again. If you're new here, welcome. I talk about art, jujitsu, life, just whatever's on my mind really. I hope you enjoy. It's 5 a.m. and I'm getting ready to start a new commissioned piece. This one was ordered as a birthday present, which I thought was really cool. Um, this girl wanted a dip pen drawing with some accents of color with watercolor. That's been my favorite lately, so I was super excited to get started. I've gotten a lot of questions about my drawing process, so I thought I'd talk about it a bit to share what I do when I'm drawing and to get ready for it. So. When I start a piece, I do like to have a light pencil sketch. Before I put the pencil on paper, I actually draw out the sketch on my iPad. Then I'll trace it onto the paper that the final piece is going to be on. I find that this helps me avoid too much pencil smudging, eraser marks, or even smudging the ink trying to erase the pencil marks under the, the, the ink. So once I have the sketch on paper, I'll go in with the dip pen and overall I think the final piece looks nicer and cleaner and just better. When I start the drawing, I do like to go in and place just some lines, like the outline of the drawing before going in with the cross hatching to add the values and tones within the drawing. What I found most challenging about working with the dip pen is knowing the amount of pressure to apply. In order to get the nice lines and have the cross hatching be effective, the way that you use the dip pen is going to be really important. So if you apply too much pressure, the line is going to come out too thick. And if you apply too little pressure, the ink will either not come out or it'll be too thin and it'll break up and look inconsistent. Aside from figuring out how to place a line on paper, I also found the cross hatching to be really challenging. So for those of you that don't know, cross hatching is a drawing technique that's used to create like the values or the tones, the shading within a piece by drawing closely spaced parallel lines uh, pretty much on top of each other facing different directions. Um, another way I saw it described online was it said a method of line drawing that describes light and shadow. And they also said the representation of light utilizes the white or the openness of the paper, while the shadow is created by a density of cross lines. To help me better understand this method of drawing or this technique, cross hatching, my professor in college actually helped, he helped me by telling me to study other artists that, well, that use this method. Um, he told me to look up their drawings and basically redraw them, try to recreate their drawings so that I could understand the placement of the cross, the placement of the lines and where they had like denser cross hatching versus less lines and more spread apart, which helps create the shading effect. This, to my surprise, this actually helped me a ton. Um, just being able to study someone else, how they do it, and then how I would be able to better apply that within my drawings to create the effect that I needed. If you see my earlier work, the line work was really inconsistent. Um, this piece here is actually the first dip pen piece that I drew, and it is of my college professor. So in his class, we would just take a random seat every day, and when we would come in, whoever we sat across from is who we drew. On this day, I just so happened to be sitting across from him. And just looking at this drawing, I see so many things wrong with it. The cross hatching was really bad. Um, bad because it was ineffective. There isn't much contrast throughout the piece, I was really struggling with the line work as well. I can tell because I don't have, well, I don't see the quality line that I would like to see. It's really inconsistent and I even have a few smudges in there from not really knowing how to handle the dip pen. 
Um, I had difficulty finding the amount of pressure that I needed to get the lines to look the way that I wanted, but I do like going back and looking at the growth that I've had within just my artwork. Sometimes it's easy to overlook your personal growth, but man, we really need to give ourselves more credit, or at least I do. <laughs> and I say this, I say this because I have trouble giving myself credit sometimes, and I have to catch myself and stop myself in my tracks because the way that I talk to myself sometimes is not how I would talk to someone else all the time. This feeling of not being good enough, of not being perfect, it, it goes away when I focus in on the progress that I've made over time. No one is perfect, I think we all know that, and you can always outperform yourself. So if we focus on the progress that we've made and the progress that we're currently making, and we're making sure that we are taking action to progress, then maybe we would be nicer to ourselves and allow ourselves to just try new things more often rather than holding ourselves back out of, well, out of fear of failure. A lot of times I found that I've held myself back from doing new things that I wanted to do out of fear of not being perfect, out of fear of not being liked, out of fear of whatever. And it, it sounds so silly now, thinking back at it, like this, this YouTube channel being one example, I've wanted to start this for a while now and I had a thousand and one excuses for why I didn't or I couldn't when maybe I could have, but it is what it is, I'm here now, and I am so grateful for all of you that watch my videos, leave comments, and send me messages, um, give me feedback, I'm always open to like this constructive criticism, because I'm always looking for ways to just grow as a person, grow as an artist, and now grow on YouTube, because well, this is so new to me and I feel like half the time I don't know what I'm doing, but here I am trying anyway. Um, it's, it's such a beautiful journey when you really start to love and accept yourself for the way that you are, knowing that you can be better because you can take control of where you are and what you're doing and work on what needs to improve. I look back at that first ink pen drawing and I know what I needed to do to get better and I, at least when I look at my drawings now, like looking at this one compared to that first one, I'm very proud of where I am. I think my handling of the dip pen has gotten a whole lot better. I think the way that I laid down the lines has gotten super consistent. Here I'm laying down the shadow and the lines are all just going in one direction um, just to keep it consistent throughout so it, it just looks like a consistent tone throughout the whole shadow. Overall, I am really happy with how this piece turned out. This drawing was on a 5 by 7 paper and even though it was a small drawing, um, I went in with a good amount of detail and I just really liked how it turned out. These jujitsu drawings are, they're really just my favorite ones to create. Um, it just, in this particular piece, it's a couple rolling together and I think it just shows the mutual passion and love for the sport. After the ink pen drawing, I went in with some watercolor and just colored in the belts. Um, once a blue belt, once a purple belt. So I went in and added that. I love the pop of color with this black and white. I think I I really like how it looks. I think it looks really nice. I do use the inspiration from these jujitsu pieces and any other art piece that I create 
and I do make t-shirts, prints, and other, just a lot of other things that I'll have available in my Etsy shop either now or in the near future. And I do have a discount code available now for those of you that support me here on YouTube. The discount code is in the description box below. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or find me on Instagram. My handle is Kelsey B. Send me a message. I'm more than happy to address anything that comes my way. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.